Welcome to the Undercut and Side Actions webinar presented by Eccentric Mold and Engineering. I'm Petro, your host for the session. Before I turn over the webinar to our keynote, the presentation is expected to last less than 30 minutes, which will include Q&A. So please feel free during the presentation to submit your questions using the chat function that's located on the lower right hand side of the control panel. We'll answer as many questions as we can. I now turn over the webinar to our keynote, uh, John Sidorowitz. John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Petro. Uh, my name is John Sidorowitz. Uh, I've been well, I'm involved in the technical site, sales side here at Eccentric. Uh, I've been involved with injection molding and part design for over 14 years. Uh, I've seen thousands upon thousands of parts, uh, worked with lots of customers. So um, dealing with undercuts is, is an everyday thing. So. Uh, that's what this whole webinar is about. So let's kind of get into things. All right, so we'll kind of go through the agenda. Uh, we'll be going over what is an undercut, uh, explain what that is, uh, purposes of undercuts, why we need them, undercut requirements, you know, if they are needed, you know, how do we work with them, uh, the challenges of undercuts, and overcoming undercuts. And then at the end, we'll go over some tips to, uh, to help with your undercut design. So what is an undercut? Mm -hmm. Undercuts are features that prevent the part from being directly ejected from the mold. So there's an obstruction or, or something that's creating a die lock condition. Uh, we categorize them into two types, internal and external. So an external undercut is gonna be something on the outside perimeter of the part where an internal obviously would be on the, uh, the inside of the part. Um, purposes of undercuts, uh, creating interlocking snap and latch features, uh, something to attach to housings together, clam shells, or two other parts to, to bring them together uh, without any mechanical holds like screws or glue or, or, or bonding. Uh, side holes or ports on housings, uh, you need to have an exit for something, uh, it's not in the line of draw, you need that. Uh, creating vertical threads and barb fittings, uh, which I'll get into an example of. Um, and then provide a way to mold in threaded and custom inserts that aren't in the line of draw. Uh, and to learn more about that, you can actually uh, watch our other insert molding webinar uh, on our website. Uh, and then lastly, you know, keeping the functionality of your design intent. You know, we 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 want to make the part that you designed. You know, and keep it that way without uh, you know making you change your part to make it easier for us. So actually, I'm going to pull up a couple examples of some parts with undercuts. Give me one second here. Uh, so this is a part uh, with some barb features, which we kind of talked about. Um, we've got some undercut features here, and you know under here, this is assuming, you know our line of draw is up here, and, and, and our mold's pulling this way. So we've got to have a way to capture these undercuts here. So with that, we would create two hand loads that would essentially pull from here in this direction and then opposite to create these undercut features. Now typically barbs you're not going to want parting lines on so this would be captured on your cavity side uh, just because typically you're going to have tubing sliding over and if you have any type of parting line flash or anything like that that could cut or uh, tear the tubing. So this one's a, a pretty straightforward you know two hand pulls to create these undercut features you know in here around this flange that's a little bit better view there and create those there. Um, this part, as simple as it looks, actually has uh, quite a bit of undercuts going on just about all the way around the part externally and internally. And uh, we'll look at this one a little bit more in depth later. But you can see, you know, undercuts are going to be required here, here, you know, along each side. So let's get into the purposes of undercuts. Um, sorry, the undercut requirements. 
So in order to capture an undercut, we're going to need a hand load, which we call, uh, it's also, also termed uh, hand pull, action, uh, anything that's a loose piece within the mold that, that allows us to capture that undercut. Uh, the next thing we're going to require is, is space within the design. Uh, so we have room to move out the, uh, uh, the loose piece of the mold. So we can't have any obstructions. And to kind of go back to, to this part, to use as an example, we have an undercut right here. So if you can imagine, we're going to have to have a loose piece of tool uh, that's going to have to pull out, and then we can remove it from the part. Now imagine if we had a standing, you know, boss here or ribs, you know, that would create a, a secondary lock and we wouldn't be able to remove that hand load. So we want to make sure there's no obstructions in the area where the undercuts are. So this, you know, this is clean, clear and free in here. So we have enough room to, to pull this out and out of the park. Let's go back. Next is, is tight shutoff. So um, these are loose pieces in the mold, and within, with injection molding, you're dealing with high pressure. So uh, the hand loads that we're creating need to be tight within the mold, the core and cavity. Uh, if they're loose, if they're not locked, uh, you're not going to get good shutoff, and you're gonna, it's going to result in, in parting lines or heavy parting lines and flash. So that's why we want to make sure uh, when we're making our, our hand loads, you know, we, we get tight shutoffs. Um, you know, we do a lot of parts that are long tubes and with uh, zero draft sometimes or, or minimal drafts. Uh, we don't want, you know, for example, down here on the bottom right, you know, if we were creating this this hand load and it was kind of floating under high pressure, this, this pin will move up and down. So to combat that, we actually come in from both sides and, and create a lock uh, we have the, the female side and the male side where these two would come together and get inserted into the mold. After the part's molded, each hand load would be pulled from each end of the part, thus you get your part. Um, so, oh, Sorry, going the wrong way. Undercut challenges. <clears throat> so... Non-drafted areas can be difficult to remove, especially when you're dealing with uh, tube-type parts uh, that we can't have draft, uh, long draw, uh, any hand loads like that. Uh, they can be difficult to remove. Uh, to offset that, there are coatings out there that we can use, uh, something like, uh, like a Teflon, nickel plating, and, and others for those low draft areas to, to help with the, uh, the removal of those hand loads from those non-drafted uh, undercuts. Second, some materials are easier to pull. The harder the material, the harder the pull. Uh, you know, you've got naturally lubricated materials like uh, acetal, some nylons, uh, polypro, softer materials, ABSs. You know, those will be more forgiving than, say, a, a 35 to 50 percent glass-filled nylon. So if you imagine, um, you know, a part like what do we got here. So this part here. So we've got some internal threads here. So this is going to be a, a loose piece. And if this was a, uh, you know, high glass filled material, the material is going to shrink onto the hand load, and it's going to be hard to unscrew this screwing core. So that's another thing to keep in mind is, is your materials and the amount of undercuts that you've got. Um, so glass filled materials, you need to get as much draft on those undercut features as we can. The biggest thing I think is, is having undercuts on cosmetic surfaces. Um, you're going to increase your witness lines or parting lines on the outside of your part. So if you're looking for a, a highly cosmetic part, uh, you want to minimize your undercuts, remove them from the external, and try to put them internally. And the best example of this is, you know, check any cell phone case. You're going to be, it's going to be hard to find any cell phone case with external parting, or external parting lines. 
uh, all your undercuts, you know, for your button cutouts, your uh, your power uh, cutouts, they're all going to be captured from the inside. So your phone is going to be actually be hiding those uh, those witness lines. So how do you overcome undercuts? You know, undercuts can add cost, and in some cases it can add a lot of cost. So we want to avoid them where we can. But how do we do it? Uh, there's, we're going to go through kind of a couple examples. I'll bring up some some parts. So these are kind of two typical examples of uh, undercuts that we'll see. You know, kind of a, a through hole on the side of a box or a housing. Uh, and then a couple, you know, ports, USB ports on the side of a, another housing. So how can we avoid going to uh, to using hand pulls? So we've got two examples here where you're using the core and cavity to your advantage. You know, you, you, you're creating a shutoff to, to cheat a hole uh, to create the same feature, but removing the, the undercut. Same goes for here. You know, it's actually, you know, just carrying up that hole a little bit higher but you're able to capture it with the corn cavity. And I'll bring up two examples of, you know, cheated undercuts. So this is a part, we've got two undercut clip features here. Now normally this would need a hand load, but you know, the design, the designer actually created two through holes to actually cheat. Uh, so through the cavity, you know, we've got two metal pieces, or, or the, the cavity is actually riding through the part and creating this undercut, thus not needing hand loads. So that's one example of, of cheating a, a clip feature. And the other, uh, this is kind of the, the same thing. You know, we've got an undercut feature down here, which would normally require a hand pull to, to come out in this direction. But the designer took the time, opened, created this window, to make the pass through to capture the undercut, basically creating an open close tool at that point. All right, let's go through some tips. Um, biggest one, keep obstructions away from your undercut. Um, like I said, if you've got uh, internal undercuts, especially, that's really the only time you're going to have to worry about that. Standing ribs, standing cores. Make sure there's enough room for us to get the, the loose piece out of the part. Uh, two, reduce undercuts on show surfaces to cut down on parting lines or witness lines. Uh, like I said, the biggest thing is, is, is try to move everything internally. And uh, let me bring up the part to, especially on this part, um, this one's a, a good example. You know, if we didn't have this area here, they, they put a chamfer here, which is forcing us to capture this undercut from the outside, which is going to, you know, leave witness lines. If we remove this chamfer, we can capture this feature just with one pull on this side. With the chamfer, we're going to have two pulls actually. We got a pull from this direction to capture the chamfer and this direction to capture this internal undercut here. So keep that in mind too. Adding any rads or, or chamfers on the outside of the part is going to require a hand load on the outside of the part. Uh, use draft to help facilitate the undercut removal. Uh, this is mainly for deep undercuts, undercuts that, you know, anything shallow, you really don't have to worry about. But if you're getting into tube type parts, um, anything like that, use draft where you can. Lastly is, is consider side actions uh, for custom and molded inserts. Um, you know, if you need to get an insert, you know, somewhere that's not in the line of draw, uh, we can use side actions to, to accomplish that for you. Don't uh, limit your design. Uh, we can accomplish that for you. So now we'll get into the Q&A. Yeah, John, we have a couple of questions for you. One is from uh, Phil in Connecticut. Uh, 
why do you use hand loads instead of slide cams? Okay, that's a good question. Thanks, Bill. Uh, we use hand loads for speed and time to market. Um, it, it also depends on the part geometry or whether or not it's an external or internal undercut. Uh, the auto slide is is used based on longer cycle production. So if we're, we're looking at running, you know, thousands upon thousands of parts, that's where we're going to want to look at it, it, into getting and using slides. Uh, we can do both here, but if speed is essential and uh, and it's low volume, uh, you definitely go with the, the manual hand loads. Okay, one more question for you, John. Uh, this is from Susan, Texas. On average, how much time is added to the process for every undercut in the design? Well, this is going to depend on how many hand loads are needed and the complexity of the part um, and the hand loads. And again, whether it's going to be internal hand loads, uh, external, whether there's threading involved, typically a couple of hand loads will not increase timing, uh, at least not with us. Uh, but if it gets really complex, it may add about a week, but uh, again, it's all going to depend on complexity. All right, John, thanks for that. Uh, thank you all for joining our webinar. For any questions or interest in eccentric services, please uh, contact us at the number and email on the slide or visit us online. Uh, we'll provide a link to the recorded version of this webinar within 48 hours, and we're signing off in three, two, one.